Merhabalar. Bugün karşımızda
Okay. All right. Okay. So welcome everyone, uh, online and offline. <laughs> Thank you very much for attending. So it's a great pleasure to host uh, Deli here from Durham University. Uh, Deli graduated with a PhD in Electric and Electronics Engineering from uh, University of Newcastle, Appontin, in 2005. Then he joined the Center for uh, Advanced Implementation in Durham. And since about 2004, I guess, he's been working on uh, development of digital uh, processing with uh, FPGA, and especially the our project kind of microwave genetic induction detectors and photon detection in these systems. So that is it's all there. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, so my name is uh, uh, Ali Lincoln. I'm from the University of Toronto. Uh, this morning, I'm going to give a talk on MQ's radar uh, in implementation with uh, ARC talk. Um, this uh, work has been funded by SPFC and the Royal Society. Uh, we have this uh, collaboration with the uh, team uh, at Istanbul University. So, uh, and uh, I'm very glad to be able to give this talk. So, uh, Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So, uh, our our first uh, you know, uh, I think the people here uh, uh, know more about I'm just me, but uh, I'll just uh, firstly give uh, a quick uh, introduction uh, in case people wondering uh, what is that uh, is. And I will mainly focus on the readout hardware and the firmware. Uh, finally, I will give some uh, um, results. Uh, actually, they are produced by my, by my colleagues. Uh, so, MKIS stands for Microwave uh, Kinetic Inductance Detector. So, basically, at a very low temperature. Uh, as low as something uh, 100 uh, millicalm. So the conductors become uh, superconductor. And, uh, and the electrons travel in pairs for the uh, Cooper pack. So when there's a, a photon uh, strike this uh, uh, conductor, it will break this uh, 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 Cooper pack, you know, and this uh, uh, Cooper power will change the inductance of this inductor. So basically, here's how it works. So, just a second. No, no problem. <laughs> no. All right. Okay. So, so, so yeah. So I just uh, 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 think this uh, this photon will break the couple parts in the superconductor. So that uh, uh, this action changes the inductance of this inductor. So basically, when this uh, uh, instant light strikes the uh, inductor part of this uh, detector, so this detector, uh, as you can see from the uh, right side, uh, left side of this picture, is um, this picture is taken from the USB piece of one side. It shows a, a typical layout of uh, this uh, MKIS uh, this detector. So you can see uh, the, the, the detector itself has two parts. One is an inductor, the other is a capacitor. So that this uh, inductor and capacitor forms uh, uh, an oscillating pattern. So when this uh, instant light uh, strikes the inductor, then it uh, breaks uh, two parts, and then it changes the inductance. So the LC reference frequency will change. So 
Then there, there, there's a system, uh, a electronic system called the radar system. Then we'll be able to detect the exchange and to uh, detect the, the photo. And uh, uh, you can see there's also a equivalent circuit. It's a LC oscillating circuit. And uh, um, because of this uh, feature, this feature of um, uh, single photon detection, this um, make, make this sensor a bit uh, quite special for, especially for some special. And um, so, firstly, it can detect a single photon. So, when the photon strikes from the ring of this, we can see a pulse. Later, I'm going to show you some uh, results. Um, MKIT is not uh, the only sensor that can detect a uh, uh, single photon. And also, MKIT um, is not the only uh, superconductor uh, sensor for this purpose. However, the MPs uh, can uh, be integrated to uh, a single bit line. So, um, like uh, 2000 detectors can be connected to a single line. So, like uh, this uh, photo shows, uh, this photo, uh, the left side photo, uh, is taken from Iceland website. It's a Netherlands research institute. As you can see, the larger part uh, inside the photos. Um, uh, all right, the larger part in, in this picture is the capacitor, and this, the, the small part is the inductor. So, when they combine together, is a, a LC uh, kind of oscillator. And you can see the capacitor part of this, uh, uh, of this detector, they have a slightly different uh, um, uh, filling rate. So, which means is a uh, capacitance. Is different for each detector, so which means uh, its uh, resonant frequency is different for each detector. Uh, for each detector, and then there's uh, a, a signal line connecting all these uh, LC detectors. So, so in this way, so uh, thousands of these uh, LC resonance uh, can be connected to a single um, uh, signal line. We call it a feed line. So that's uh, the uh, one of the unique features uh, about uh, MPs, and uh, this feature allows um, uh, like um, many detectors um, through a few number of uh, feed lines uh, connected together to uh, form a kind of imager, and this imager would be a kind of uh, noise free compared with other CMOS or CCD detectors, um, simply because uh, there's uh, no thermal noise. Only when there's a photon coming in, it would uh, break the copper pair and then it will generate a pulse. Um, and since this image is based on pulse counting, so the uh, frame rate can be really fast. It depends on uh, how long the period you want to count the pulses. And uh, your system can be uh, designed to act uh, as soon as uh, there's a, a photon coming in, so the latency can be low. Um, because of this feature, and uh, there's uh, uh, ongoing research on using this MPs for uh, AO uh, waveform detection. Um, and, uh, and, and another Unique feature for this uh, M case is that it is also a built-in uh, a spectrum analyzer. Uh, simply because uh, the short wave length of the photon carries more energy and it generates a, a bigger pulse as uh, the lower um, uh, picture shows, and uh, the longer wave uh, photon has a lower energy and then it would generate a smaller pulse. So by the measuring of the uh, the size of this pulse, then uh, you can sum up how the uh, wavelengths of the incoming uh, for uh, the incident photon. Um, and here is a general picture about the radar system. Uh, the top part in this plot is the fridge. So inside is a very cool down uh, detector. Uh, it has few stages uh, cooling, of course. 
So inside there's MPs and also there's uh, some uh, uh, signal attenuation and uh, uh, also some amplification. Mm -hmm. And the lower part is uh, the readout electronics. I'll mainly explain more details about the lower part. So uh, I gave some uh, generic specifications um, in terms of the electronics uh, specification. Um, so this, de this detector is normally designed to work in the range of uh, uh, 4 to 8 gigahertz. Uh, and uh, on a single feed line, we can connect um, or people, other people can connect um, up to like 2,000 uh, detectors on a single field line these days. Uh, the each uh, detector takes a very can take a very low energy, so it's uh, like a minus a uh, hundred dBm. The because of this uh, uh, signal is um, pretty low, and there's uh, many stages of uh, amplification from the uh, uh, on the receiving path and the, the receiver sensitivity uh, out of the bridge is normally between minus uh, 67 dB to minus uh, 30 uh, dBi. Um, and what happens uh, uh, with this readout is that uh, the, uh, the lower part uh, is called the baseband. So it generates the waveform to drive somehow drive this uh, uh, LC oscillator, these uh, detectors, and also it has a receiving DSP to uh, get back uh, all of the signals. Um, because this signal contains, if you think about the signal, it contains and uh, the the uh, readout of uh, um, two thousand detectors. And each detector takes a big, uh, different frequencies along. And then it needs to be, you know, somehow uh, well decomposed. So, what happens at this waveform, baseband waveform, is going to be uh, upconverted to the microwave range between 4 and 8 gigahertz. Uh, because of the low power requirement of this uh, uh, detector, then there's a uh, a uh, few stages of attenuation to lower down the driving power to like uh, minus 100 dB for each detector. Uh, and uh, uh, when there's no uh, no light coming in and then there's no photon, then the oscillator should just uh, oscillates at its uh, uh, resonance frequency. Uh, and then this um, uh, in the fridge, there's also amplification because of the uh, requirement for the low noise and out of the bridge that also further low noise amplification and then sound conversion to the baseband. Uh, this by this baseband um, uh, do the something converting this uh, analog uh, signal which is um, like something like uh, four gigahertz bandwidth convert this analog signal to digital domain and then the rest of the processing um, is uh, all done in the digital format. So I'll uh, check it later. And the physical aid, this baseband nowadays can be imp implemented uh, like a, um, a single chip. So uh, this thing is called uh, RF SOC, it's a radio frequency system on chip. Uh, it's an uh, uh, FPGA chip. So, um, so, you know, there's uh, quite a few concepts in this kind of here. So, uh, basically, it's an FPGA. So, FPGA is a, a field programmable logic that contains um, a lot of um, programmable, day, uh, programmable gate memory and uh, DSP uh, processing slices. Uh, beyond that, for this chip, it also has this uh, processing. So it's called a processing system. So basically, it, you can consider it as a Raspberry Pi. So on this FPGA, you have a Raspberry Pi. So you can do some lot of clever stuff, of course. Um, and uh, what makes this uh, thing unique is that it has a built-in uh, radio frequency 
uh, ABC and DAC. And the ABC is uh, called the uh, analog to digital uh, um, version. So, which means uh, you have this uh, baseband analog signal, then you can take this, this analog C signal to the IPGA. <coughs> and with this on, on chip uh, conversion, it will be provided in a digital format for later processing. And also, it has a DAC, which does the reverse thing to convert the digital data to analog signal. And uh, they are radio frequency level. Which, well, basically, actually, this chip was, I, I think, it's a well designed for like a 4G communication. So, uh, with this a few gigahertz um, frequency range, it's um, perfectly for, for this 4G or 5G communication. But for us, for this uh, four gigahertz bandwidth, uh, we call it uh, um, baseband. So when uh, when I drive the baseband later, then it means uh, four gigahertz or below four gigahertz, and it is uh, radio frequency for MPs is normally between four gigahertz and eight gigahertz. Uh, so this is the hardware board we are using at Durham, and also uh, there's a system um, implementation here as well. And um, the big chip, the the, the, the microchip, uh, uh, almost at the center, is this uh, arc sock. Mm, it's quite a large size of chip. It has over a thousand of pieces beneath it, and you can see the memory. Uh, Around it, so there's some memory for the processor and some memory for the FPGA for the, uh, its own uh, FPGA part of the um, logic. Um, at the very bottom here, that's the uh, interface to the baseband. That's the baseband interface. So which means there's a, a ADC interface and also DAC interface there. Uh, since this hardware board only deals with the uh, baseband, so we need uh, the ARP uh, uh, signal to uh, somehow connect to the uh, MKs. Uh, we build this um, interface board. Uh, this interface board um, has uh, the matching uh, DAC and NEC connector to the uh, the other board, the other board is called the CCO triple one, it's uh, the um, RF SOC uh, host board, and this one is an uh, interface. So, um, uh, this, um, this board is basically an uh, up converting and a down um, converting board. Uh, there's a two feet lines designed on this board, so which means uh, uh, on each of the system, we can support uh, up to 4,000 4, detectors. And there's uh, some on, on board uh, uh, already built uh, like a reference clock input and uh, all the other necessary power supply, uh, MCU for management. It's a, a self complete board. Um, and uh, we, we, we also build this uh, RF uh, uh, cover in aluminum. So, as the picture shows, so that would shield the board from other interference. Um, so uh, this is the, some details of this uh, transmitter. Um, as I showed in the early um, uh, talk, that uh, the transmitter uh, generates the signal to drive this MPs. Um, the driving system um, of is uh, all the whole actually the whole signal system is a kind of a IQ based uh, uh, software defined uh, radio system. So uh, just in case people are wondering what is this IQ, so the IQ, uh, you know, this uh, signal, signal can be uh, presented in a uh, waveform, of course, and uh, in, a, in a time domain, uh, if, if there's a single entity signal, then um, we only know it's a real time part. So, uh, but it, with IQ, uh, we also know somehow equipment like uh, not the, just the, the real time, uh, the real part. We also know it's the uh, image part. So you can consider that uh, uh, this IQ is kind of a, a complex number form of the signal. And uh, so um, for connecting this uh, uh, um, uh, 
uh, uh, R store hardware to the MP sensor. Firstly, they need uh, some kind of uh, driving signal, and they support converting the baseband driving signal to the radio frequency. Uh, and uh, at the beginning, there's a follow filter um, somehow converting from the differential signal to single energy signal. And then there's a low, um, it's a, a low pass filter. The low pass filter removes the nightest images uh, from the DAC output. Um, if, if people are interested, I, I can later on, we can talk about why this is uh, important. But um, so far, uh, there's uh, this uh, uh, low pass filter and also uh, there's the IO driver for the mixture. The, the job of the mixture is to multiply this IO signal with the input uh, um, baseline signal so that the, the, the production will contain the signal uh, in the radio frequency range. So uh, the, this is, is a mixture, so it's a passive. Um, device, so it needs some kind of a high level of the um, IO signal and mixed with uh, baseband signal. And after that, because uh, there's a uh, low power requirement of uh, the MP sensor, so the MP sensor you can't really drive with a high power because the wing drive with high power. The, it will be overdriven and uh, some characters will be changed. So a, there's a programmable uh, attenuator to lower the signal down. Uh, and uh, and also there's um, uh, practically there's need also for some low pass filter and high pass filter just to cut off those uh, unwanted uh, radio wave uh, radio frequency signals. And finally, there's a, another stage of uh, uh, attenuation to bring down the signal level. Uh, so that's the transmitter. So from the transmitter output, uh, there's the, the um, radio frequency signal uh, ranging from 4 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz, and for 8 gigahertz to drive the uh, MPS detectors in the fridge. Um, we have this uh, spectrum output, and uh, you can see the uh, its uh, testing frequency is uh, somehow. Uh, set uh, like uh, above the six gigahertz uh, uh, signal. This is six point one gigahertz. Uh, the six gigahertz we normally use the six gigahertz as uh, um, uh, IO signal, so which is called the local oscillation signal. That's uh, the something for uh, the um, the IQ mixture conversion. So when you convert it. If you generate this uh, signal you want it, like uh, for this one, we have 6.1 gigahertz. And also, it uh, produces something we also don't want, that is called the image uh, spectrum. And for here, this uh, one is at uh, 5.9. You can see uh, there is uh, there is the smaller one. Yeah. So um, this one is uh, physically inevitable. Um, but uh, the image uh, frequency would be the lower the better. We are also um, working on some algorithms trying to further lower that down. As you can see from this plot, it is uh, like uh, uh, 30 to 40 dB uh, suppression of this uh, image signal. Uh, and the, the signal at the center is called the IO signal. It's a leak from the uh, mixture. And also, it's an, it's an inevitable. So, which means uh, uh, for the MP sensor, the center part is not useful. So, we would be uh, all these uh, the MP detectors. They designed to avoid this uh, center frequency like this one, like the 60 gigahertz. Um, uh, so, yeah, so that's uh, the, uh, that was the driving part. Now, here's uh, the receiving part. The, re the re receiving part on this uh, circuit board looks uh, uh, even simpler because um, here we have a chip. It's um, 
uh, I, I call the super trade company. The company is uh, almost um, every component you need for the re for the re receiver. Uh, at the beginning, the input there's also a uh, attenuation. This attenuation controls the um, the gain of uh, the re of this receiver. Um, and uh, um, behind this uh, uh, attenuator, there's a uh, uh, low noise uh, amplification, just in case we want the more uh, signal instead of uh, attenuation. Um, and the, here is, uh, I, I said the, uh, the, the super shape of it contains like uh, amplification, uh, frequency, uh, synthesis, and IQ mixture, and uh, even for the uh, baseband uh, amplification, it has the differential output. So, which means uh, it will save the balloon uh, 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 transformer or balloon filter to convert the single ended signal to differential signal. Um, just add uh, some information. The uh, both the, the DAC and ADC on this this people one or, 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 or this arc soft uh, device, uh, it takes uh, the signal format would be differential because the differential signal can provide uh, a lot of better um, quality you know, than single ended. Uh, but uh, the cost of the different signal will be higher. So you can see sometimes uh, on this uh, electronics, there's a single ended, sometimes there's differential. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, finally, there's uh, just a, a simple uh, low pass filter to cut off uh, unnecessary uh, noise. And uh, uh, yeah, so that was the receiving. and. Uh, also, we designed this um, uh, low noise gain block. It has the few stages. Uh, this one produces uh, the signal gain between the fridge and the, the receiver. Uh, there's uh, some result here. Uh, this is the uh, uh, only test the result. It has uh, um, uh, some kind of a flat, uh, we produce this uh, relatively flat uh, frequency response. So you can see it gives uh, uh, like a, around the 70 dB gain between the 4 gigahertz and the 8 gigahertz range. So here the, the picture where we this uh, everything put together. And you can see this uh, interface board uh, called the uh, I, I, I one sit nicely on the CCU triple one. And the CCU triple one is the uh, hard clock uh, hardware board. And this uh, board uh, was produced by Zalian himself, so it's commercially available. Um, and uh, because uh, we have this uh, our uh, NA block, this uh, game block, uh, separate from other hardware, so at the moment, this game block you can see at the some kind of the bottom of this this, this box um, is uh, installed inside the box. But actually, this uh, amplification block can also be planted on top of the fridge, which would produce a uh, uh, better signal to noise ratio. Uh, we developed this uh, test format as well. Uh, the former uh, contains uh, the FPG logic uh, that produces this uh, mm, uh, transmitter baseband signal, and also it uh, can receive the signal from uh, the baseband interface and uh, produce the captured data to the processor side. So you can see this is the uh, receiving part. Uh, sorry, this is the uh, transmitter part signal that go out from bottom here to the fridge, coming back here and the capture uh, by this uh, uh, raw capture part. This is only for testing purposes. So the raw signal captured here is just the uh, uh, ADC samples. And because of there's the, the uh, processor system here, so we can uh, get all this data inside our PGA and uh, let this, the processor system to interface all these uh, 
data to a computer through the standard Ethernet. And uh, because um, there's a processor, you can run the uh, Python notebook. And uh, we have this uh, um, build this uh, one page even, so we can control the signals. We can run a very simple, a very basic test uh, uh, to the sensors. Um, and this is the, the pipeline we are currently running at Durham. Uh, it's based on the USB uh, pipeline. The USB um, has a, a long history in this uh, MT's uh, uh, research and de development. And uh, they are currently have uh, built a core pipeline for the MT's uh, digital signal processing. The MT's digital uh, processing uh, mainly focus on the receiving part because uh, for the transmitter part is uh, um, it's quite simple, I would say, because it's simply you store, you somehow generate the waveform and store it in the memory and then play it back, and then it generates this uh, uh, baseband signal. Uh, and during the running of this MPS detection, this part even does not need change because it is simply fixed the uh, signal to drive the detectors. Uh, the receiving part. Well, the signal coming when coming to the receiving part is uh, in the form of an I and Q signal. So it's a complex number of these uh, uh, received uh, signals from the bridge. And this signal contains uh, um, the information from this uh, 2000 of uh, uh, detectors. So it had to be uh, carefully cut down um, to for each channel or for each detector. So it, uh, the first stage is called a uh, cost uh, channelization. Um, so uh, when, when coming in, the, uh, the signal band, the, the signal bandwidth is like a uh, four gigahertz. And then the, the job of this uh, uh, cost channelization is uh, somehow cut this uh, four gigahertz uh, uh, bandwidth into uh, a lot smaller ones. And uh, within uh, it, 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 each uh, small channel may contain one or two of these detectors. So, for example, if the bandwidth of this uh, cost channelization matches, it may have uh, like a two megahertz bandwidth. So, uh, and then after this uh, cost channelization, there's a uh, uh, further processing called a fine channelization. Uh, the fine channelization uh, basically moves the center of the frequency uh, of this band, or of this filter band, to the center of the detector. Um, so that means uh, from the fine channelization, uh, you would see the signal corresponding to each detector. Um, and, uh, and further down the pipeline, there would be the phase de detection and also uh, some pulse detection. Um, and later, I will also um, explain this in more detail on the test report. Um, so, uh, the USSB, uh, they built this uh, green part. All this green part actually um, was done by USSB. And uh, they did it somehow in C. You know, the IPC logic normally, if you look into the development, is uh, either in HDL or in Verilog. That's the language for describing uh, uh, hardware program, programmable uh, de de devices. So, and uh, but um, uh, that is they also provide a tool to somehow can uh, compile your C into Verilog or HDL. So that means uh, uh, it can speed up the development and also it can lower the cost of uh, maintenance uh, simply because it's a C is uh, more understandable than HDL and very long. So they, they are the first try to use C in this MKS uh, pipeline. Uh, and uh, we somehow uh, 
uh, put the pipeline and uh, wrap this pipeline with our own control uh, uh, program and logic and put them into a standard interface is called an SCPI. That's a uh, kind of a standard interface for many kinds of uh, in instruments. And that's only for control and monitor purposes. And also we build the we are building this NG interface to allow this uh, uh, data, this, uh, um, we call the face data, basically that the, uh, the signals from the MPs to send out in the stream of UDP format. Now, so because that, that's a UDP format, it's a standard internet format. So later on, we can use other standard uh, computing uh, Resources like uh, uh, GPU for further analysis of this um, type of, uh, of this uh, signal from MKIT. Uh, uh, here is um, some very early stage result. Like actually, this was taken last year, and and also by this chunk, I'd like to acknowledge the contribution from Astro. And the USSB and uh, 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 we call the Magellan at the USSB. Um, they provide us uh, some uh, MPs device so that we can uh, test uh, the signal and uh, to complete the uh, readout uh, system. Um, uh, this device is like uh, the USB, um, we call the USB or original. Uh, MP device and USB 2K MP device and also some uh, MP, MP device from Astro has been tested working with uh, our system. Uh, now there's uh, more results from this produced uh, by my colleague. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see a notch of uh, this plot. And the, that point is a resonance point of uh, the MK detector. So uh, uh, when we, the first stage for connecting an MK uh, detector is to a uh, kind of a scan. Uh, we test the, uh, the IQ uh, readout at the different frequencies. Uh, close to the reference frequency. And when we put it on the plot, then it will form a loop. It's quite a round of a circle, that loop. So, uh, which means if we see, uh, we do a scan, like if this uh, redness is at uh, 4.5 gigahertz, and then we do a scan, and gave uh, like a two megahertz bandwidth scan, and we tested the MKs at a different frequencies, Within this uh, two megahertz uh, bandwidth scan, then we can produce the. Uh, if we check its uh, amplitude, we produce the uh, the left side uh, of this plot. Uh, because I mentioned its IQ is a complex uh, number, so if we put that on the two D plot, then we produce the loop uh, like the uh, right hand plot. Um, so that the. Uh, the static uh, scan uh, of the uh, MK uh, detector. And now there's uh, some dynamic re result. So uh, when there's a no photon coming in, the MK de detector would simply just uh, resonate at this uh, resonant frequency. Uh, as you can see uh, in this uh, uh, left hand plot, there's uh, a bigger dot here. So it's a big dot here. So that's a, somehow it's an idling point when there's no photon coming in. And uh, when there's an instant photon strikes the inductor, it's an uh, inductance of this uh, uh, LC oscillating will change and also the uh, resonant frequency of the detector will change. And then it all will, the IQ performance or the IQ measurement will move from its idle point along the circle with a bit of face shape. Okay. With a bit of face shape like that. 
So on the IQ plot, we would see this uh, uh, IQ uh, um, sampling from the idle point uh, shift to build back. Do something automatic. Or not? <laughs> uh, our work is sensitive. Oh, uh, much? <laughs> yeah, I know that's a smart boy. <laughs> it's very smart. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So on the IQ plot, you see something like that. And from the face, uh, the, 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 the face is relevant to the center. Yeah. From face, it's relevant to the center. So from the face plot, you will see the pulses. And the, the lower one is an uh, amplified uh, pulse. So by detecting this pulse, you can detect the photon. You can count the incoming photons. And also by measuring the, uh, the size, the height of the pulse, you can even know the uh, spectrum of the incoming photon. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, that's uh, about my talk. And, uh, and, uh, any question? Please. And uh, this picture is actually our fridge at the room. So it contains a lot of uh, gold parts in there. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I have one. Uh, for a given FPGA port, how many uh, resonators do we should we expect to be spread out? You talked about a very broad frequency range, like from four to eight gigahertz, but uh, does that mean that we can just read with one board hundreds of uh, resonators or just? Uh, the, yeah, this uh, this stock chip. Uh, as a, as a, we, I, I think it's a Dallas, the company uh, for the Dallas, they developed this chip uh, for the communication industry. And uh, luckily that uh, we can take the advantage of that. So it has a bunch of uh, ADC and BAC uh, integrated in that. Uh, if we count that number, I, it, it, we can say it can even support up to four gigabytes because each gigabyte will consume uh, uh, a pair of uh, because it is IQ uh, structure so that the each gigabyte uh, uh, would consume uh, a pair of ABC and DAC. So um, this uh, smart code has uh, eight ABCs and also eight DACs. So in that sense, it can support up to four uh, gigabytes. However, the field line itself consumes uh, also other resources like uh, um, DSP uh, slices, uh, like uh, um, memory re re resource. So, practically, I would still believe two field lines are uh, possible, although we are currently only testing one. So, that's somehow I will develop this hardware with uh, two field lines. But uh, at the moment, we only populated a uh, one line for testing. Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, each device should support uh, practically up to two feet line, which gives uh, 4,000 uh, detectors in the world. 4,000 detectors, yes. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank